In the last month or so, I've had a few people email me saying that in my books and on my site, I recommend Yoast SEO as a WordPress plugin. And yet at the same time, I say don't focus on keywords when you're creating content, focus on themes. And I stand by that 100%. So where is the contradiction that these people are seeing? Well, the contradiction actually is one of the features of the Yoast plugin. And if I go on to an edit post screen, I can show you what that feature is. If we scroll down, the Yoast SEO adds this box here. And there's four tabs, general, page analysis, advanced and social. And what you can do here is you can type in a main keyword for your page. Let's say that I'm going to say that this page is about Windows 10 and I want to optimize it for Windows 10. If I update and save that information now, and we scroll back down to the box that Yoast had included, you can see that we've got more information here. It says focus keyword usage. Your focus keyword was found in article heading, yes, page title, yes, page URL, yes, content, yes, 13, meta description, no. And what the Yoast plugin is trying to do is help you to optimize pages. And this is where people think there is a contradiction in what I'm saying. They say, well, I don't say focus on keywords and yet Yoast plugin does this. But what you need to realize is that this is only a tiny bit of what Yoast SEO does. And I do not use this feature. If we click on the page analysis, you can see we've got even more details. So a meta description was specified, but it does not contain the target keyword phrase. The keyword density is 0.71, which is a bit low. The keyword was found 13 times. And this is starting to get in very, very dangerous ground because if you followed all of the suggestions on here, you're going to end up with a page that is SEO'd 2005 style with keywords stuffed in all the major tags, created at a certain density and all sorts of things that Google now penalize you for. If I go over to, let me just open up my all posts. Okay, I'm over here with the all posts. That one that I just enabled the keyword in, this first one here, has now got a light at the end. And it says that the SEO is good. But a lot of people are using this Yoast SEO plugin. Let's go back down to it. And in particular, this general and page analysis to try to optimize their pages. I'll repeat, if you do that, you're going to get your pages penalized because Google does not like it. In my opinion, Yoast really should remove that from the plugin because to me, it, it actually adds a feature which is very, very dangerous. And so this is where some people think I'm contradicting myself. I say, don't worry about plugins. And yet there we are. Yoast is trying to get you to analyze your page for specific keyword phrases. And that's what I'm saying. Don't focus on keywords. And here we have it. So what is the advantage of Yoast plugin and what do I use it for? Well, Yoast plugin has a huge number of different features which I use. And the first one is over here on this third tab, the advanced tab, which if I click on it, I can create meta tags on this particular post, post by post, if I wanted to, that can define whether robots can index it or archive it. So the first one here, Meta Robot Index is set as default. In other words, I've got this as index and do follow. But I could say to the robots, I could tell the robots not to follow links on the page, or I could say don't archive it. Or I could say no index, uh, no follow, no archive. If it was a page I didn't want appearing in the search engines. So it gives me a lot more control. And that is just one of the features. If we go down to, let me just update this because I can't remember whether I actually saved it after making that change. If we go down to the Yoast plugin, we go down here to SEO. That's the menu that's created by Yoast plugin. We've got a lot of different features here. These ones here, I'm not going to go into, but let's have a look down at the metal, meta, uh, titles and metas, because this is another feature that I use a lot. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to customize the menus and meta descriptions across your site on a global basis. So for example, my posts on this particular site, I've set up a template that will display the title of the post, then a separator, and then the site name. The separator that is used, I believe is defined. In fact, I don't think it's on that general. Oh, it is on the general. Okay. That's the title separator. So you can decide which title separators you want. Let me just close that. If I go over to one of the posts, let's have a look at that post. I was just editing. Let me just go and click on view post. And 
what we should find is we should find the title of the post and then a dash, whoops, and then a dash and then the site name. And the title of the post is, you can, you can see in the tab here of Chrome, you can see the little help pop up there, lessons learned from Windows 10 upgrade dash easy SEO newsletter. So it's exactly what I've defined in here. And you can do that for posts, pages, various other things like categories and tag pages as well. You can have your own. You can set up custom meta descriptions as well. I've got it here to use the excerpt from the post. So here we are when I'm in the post. Let me scroll down to the excerpt. I don't actually have it in here, which is a mistake. I, I should put it on all my posts and I try to put it on all my posts. Let me just type in a quick excerpt for this. Okay, I've just written a short excerpt there. Windows 10 is being forced upon us. While I normally recommend waiting, I was forced to upgrade and decided to write about my experiences. So let me just update that. And what I've got set in the post meta description is I've said use the meta, sorry, use the excerpt for the meta description tag. So let me just go back to this post and wait for it to finish saving. Okay, and I'm going to go and view the post. Here we are on the post. I'm going to right click and view page source. And then I'm going to find the meta description. Here we are, meta description. And you can see here Windows 10 is being forced upon us while I normally recommend waiting, blah, blah, blah. So in that way, I've actually used the excerpt for the meta description for my posts. So all my posts use that excerpt. Similarly, all my pages do as well for the meta description. Taxonomies are things like categories. And again, you can have templates for the titles and for the descriptions. And you've got archives and you've got some other stuff there as well. So that's one of the very useful things that I use it for. You've got a social tab. And this can be used to import your social profile pages here, which basically tell Google about your social profiles, which is quite important. The XML sitemaps is another good use of the Yoast SEO plugin because you can enable it or disable it. And I've actually got it enabled here. You can exclude posts by including the post ID in exactly the same way as I used to use the Google XML sitemaps. Um, and I used to include the post ID to exclude specific posts from my sitemap. I can do the same thing here now in the Yoast one as well. I can exclude categories of posts. So I can, I'm excluding media, I'm excluding views. I can normally exclude pages as well because I don't have important pages on my site. Everything that I want people to go to are as posts. And you've got a fair number of options there. You've got an advanced tab here which can help you out if your theme doesn't have breadcrumbs. It can try to enable breadcrumbs within your theme. And you can also do things with permalinks. Like normally when you're on a category page, you've got category in the URL, but you can actually strip that out if you wanted to. So there's more options in here for SEO. Under tools, we've got some things here which I don't actually use, but you can bulk edit titles and descriptions and, and various other bits of information. The search console is quite useful because you can link it up to your search Google search console, which is the, the newer name for um, Google Webmaster Tools. And this will then give you details of pages that can't be found. So you can see here I've got a list of 404s and I've got them for desktop, smartphone. Um, and then I can also got settings over here and I can have a look at this, find out what pages are not being found and fix those errors. So as you can see, there's a lot more to Yoast SEO than just keyword optimizing. If you want to use it properly, have a look at these other features. I've just gone through them very, very quickly. Okay. And also the features, if I can scroll down to where they are again, the features down here, advanced. Okay. And social, I don't use, but if you want to have a different title for your Facebook title to show on Facebook rather than in the Google search, you can put in your own Facebook title and description and even Facebook image. So you can have optimization specifically for Facebook and then optimization, the normal optimization will be for the search engines. But this is the page that I use more often than not. If I have something that I don't want archived or I don't want it indexed. So for example, my contact page, I don't want it indexed. So I would have this set as no follow. And if that says no index, no follow, and I'd have it as no archive as well. So it doesn't appear in Google. All right. So Yoast SEO is not just about this page analysis. Stay clear of these two tabs or you will get into trouble.